BBC News with Sue Montgomery. President Biden has said there will be no let-up in the tempo of US evacuation efforts in Afghanistan after a weekend in which 23 American military flights took off from Kabul airport. Mr Biden said nearly 28,000 people had been flown out since August the 14th. He added the operation was very challenging. We continue to see not only enormous, the enormous scope and scale of the effort, we will see the individual lives that are affected, the families that are desperate to get home to their loved ones in America, the communities of veterans who have mobilized to try to help their former interpreters get to safety, the frightened Afghans who aren't sure what to do. To state the obvious, it's heartbreaking. You can't look at it and not feel it. Nothing about this effort is easy. The Taliban have said hundreds of their fighters are heading for the Panjshir Valley, north of Kabul, because local leaders had refused to hand it over peacefully. Earlier, the region's powerful militia leader, Ahmed Massoud, said he was ready for talks to avert a civil war, so long as the Taliban formed an inclusive, decentralised government. Until a week ago, Amrullah Saleh was the first vice president of Afghanistan. He now considers himself the legitimate caretaker president of Afghanistan and is allied with uh, with Ahmad Massoud. Mr Saleh said while he was open to dialogue with the Taliban, he would not accept their vision of the future of Afghanistan. Let me be very clear. We will not accept clerical dictatorship in my country. We make peace, but the peace should not mean surrender to a group with massive record of uh, human rights violation, massacre of people, you name it. That will not happen. Sources from the anti-Taliban resistance told the BBC that they have killed 300 Taliban fighters in Baglan province. Heavy sustained rainfall and winds of more than 60 kilometres an hour are continuing to hit the northeast of the United States as tropical storm Ongri moves inland. On the coast of Rhode Island, where the storm made landfall, 100,000 homes are without power. Flash floods have closed bridges and swamped roads. New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, said the storm posed a risk to people across the region. We already have saturated ground. So the absorption capacity of the ground is limited. And that's what makes this level of rainfall especially uh, problematic. President Biden has approved emergency aid for the state as well as Connecticut and Rhode Island. BBC News. The number of people killed by flash floods in the U.S. state of Tennessee has risen to more than 20. Rescue workers are continuing to look for dozens who are still missing. Record rainfall of more than 40 centimetres in some areas sparked widespread flooding on Saturday. Rising waters uprooted huge trees, tore through homes, leaving hundreds uninhabitable and carried away cars. The authorities in Haiti say more than 2,200 people are now known to have been killed by the huge earthquake that struck the country earlier this month. Search and rescue workers are still looking for almost 350 people who are still missing. Aid efforts have been hampered by serious storm damage to roads and other infrastructure. The Palestinian authorities in Gaza say Egypt has decided to close the Rafah crossing in both directions from Monday. It's an important route for supplies into the enclave, as it's the only border point into Gaza not controlled by Israel. The territory's governing party, Hamas, said Egyptian officials had provided no further information. The decision to shut the Rafah crossing, which was only reopened in May, follows an escalation in hostilities between Palestinian militants and Israeli government. Forces. The Belgian footballer Romelu Lukaku has scored his first goal for Chelsea almost a decade after making his debut for the English Premier League side. He helped them beat Arsenal 2 0. Inside the penalty area, back into the middle, Lukaku will score! He's hardly had three touches in the game. He puts his fingers to his lips. He wants to silence the Arsenal fans. It is a goal scoring return to the Premier League. Lukaku re-signed for Chelsea earlier this month in a deal worth more than $130 million. He first joined them as a teenager. BBC News.